Hey YouTubers, my name is X Factor. A couple days ago I did a video on how to drastically improve your frame rates within Battlefield 4 and it has to do with unparking cores on multi-core systems. Do you have a multi-core AMD or Intel processor? If you haven't already done so, go check that video out. There's been a ton of success stories. Just read down in the comments. Some people are gaining 20, 30, 40, and even 50 frames depending on their hardware setup. So we're going to continue that conversation. Some other things you can check on, some other things you can do, including my own personal video settings. So first and foremost, I run Windows 8.1 now. I started doing that back in the Battlefield 4 beta. We all know the beta was not optimized at all. You could have six supercharged rocket engines in your computer and you were getting 70 frames a second sometimes some lag sometimes some stutter well i went to windows 8.1 in the beta i instantly grabbed 20 to 30 frames and it was smooth as a baby's bottom battlefield 4 finally releases it's even more optimized. I was playing the beta on EVGA GTX 780s, super clocked, and SLI configuration. I had two toasters running in my uh, my computer. So the game releases, and all of a sudden I notice I'm getting 180 to 200 frames. It's like, what is going on? This, this is wonderful optimization. I actually turned one off, and I've been running on one EVGA GTX 780 super clock for the last couple of weeks. And I've always been broadcasting my frames, and most people are saying, well, how are your frames locked at 120? What's your settings? What are you doing? So, number one, I'm running Windows 8.1. The benchmarks are finally coming out. I'm going to link a 14-page benchmark that puts Windows 7 versus Windows 8.1, and it uses a multitude of systems, several AMD CPUs, several Intel CPUs, AMD video cards, and NVIDIA video cards. They benchmarked it all on 1080p on a multitude of settings, and the results are drastic. Windows 8.1 is garnering 10, 20, 30, 40 more frames a second on the same hardware compared to Windows 7. And no matter what your setup is, if you're an AMD or an Intel guy, uh, there is a system that is similar to yours on this benchmark. I guarantee it. So please go check out that link. Go read up the last couple pages. The benchmarks are pretty much stunning. So you've got the Windows debate, 7 versus 8. A big frame jump there. Here's a question for you. When's the last time you've updated or checked for a download for your BIOS or your chipset? Probably been a while, right? If you haven't done so, go look up your motherboard online, go to the manufacturer website, and go download the latest BIOS and chipset. Why? Because a lot of the uh, graphics cards software, the drivers, is written based on the newer chipset drivers and BIOS drivers. That can create a lot of problems. It can be a gremlin of sorts. So if you don't have all the updated software for your sound card, your chipset, your BIOS, you might already have an issue. Some people say, well, the new graphics card drivers don't work for me. I'm getting worse frames. Well, let me ask you this. What's the chance that you've got a corrupt install, an old install still lingering on your computer? So I always recommend do a complete wipe of your video card drivers. Clean out your registry. Redownload a clean installation of the newest drivers only after you've updated your chipset and your BIOS and you've re you've uh, rebooted your computer when prompted on those installations. Once you have that all set up, you should have a pretty big frame boost. Some people have stuttering. Some people have what feels like a hardware lag. Most of that's caused by BIOS chipset and drivers that just aren't talking together because they're out of date something is out of whack so give that a look so you're going to notice my frames in the top right hand corner are basically locked at 120 i'm running on one evga gtx 780 now because i don't need the second one and i made a config file it's also important that you don't overframe your computer because that can create your computer to work harder than it really needs to so my config file has two things it portrays my frame rate and it locks my frame rate because vsync can cause input lag it's kind of a bad nasty old technology that's going to be quickly replaced by nvidia's g-sync and that's something else you can read up on that's going to be coming out in a couple months thanks to the guys at nvidia so let's talk about video settings some of the sacrifices i've made in the visual quality of battlefield 4 to make sure i'm getting 120 frames because that's what my monitor can handle and when i've got that it is as smooth as a baby's bottom and unfortunately you guys can't see that because youtube only portrays 30 frames a second and of course it blurs it and pixelates it right 
So let's take a look. First, I'm going to show you my mouse sensitivity. First and foremost, 17% for me might be different for 17% for you because my DPI is 1800. So to get my 17%, which feels good to me, might feel alien to you, you would have to set your DPI and your mouse to 1800. Vehicle mouse sensitivity, 20%. And then gameplay here, weapon zoom click button. I prefer click button versus hold button. And HUD visibility, 80%. Network smoothing factor, 10 or 0. The net code in Battlefield 4 is lacking quite a bit. There's some magical Houdini bullets that can kill you from across the map. But in reality, that guy is pumping hot lead into you. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bullets spamming the trigger. And on your screen, you magically flop over. Or you're doing the same. You're pumping 10, 11, 12, 13 bullets into a guy. And he just goes bunny hopping uh, like nothing happened. This helps quite a bit with that regi registry, basically. There's not a cure-all. It's not a fix, but it helps a little bit. So what about audio settings? Uh, master volume, that's something you can play with based on what else is going on. I need to hear team speak, so I keep that down just a little bit. Hi-fi and uh, stereo for me. I'm not sure why that was set on surround. So what about the video settings? All right, here we go. 119 hertz, 1080p, full screen, brightness at 50, vertical sync off. Again, that's going to lock you in at 60 and create quite a bit of input lag and can be a problem. Field of view, here's a controversial thing. There's a problem with the field of view in Battlefield 4. And it has to do with, number one, when you ADS aim down sight, your sensitivity seems to be attached to it. If you start adjusting your field of view uh, to do a 360 while ADS, it's going to change. The measurement will change. Not to mention, when you aim down sight, see how my screen's slightly zooming here with the irons? If you have a larger field of view, it doesn't zoom. Everything stays super tiny. Not like Battlefield 3. In Battlefield 3, it would adjust and zoom properly. Uh, in this game, it seems to be a little bit broken, so be very careful of the higher field of view. Resolution scale. This is a way to save frames. You can drop this to 85%, 80%, and that potentially can save you uh, frames. Now, here are my settings, and again, for me, it's about maintaining 120 frames. Uh, I choose performance over super pretty. And this is my baseline. I found the bottom of where I can stick at 120. Now, the question is, what can I increase and what should I increase to make the game just a little bit more pretty or make people stand out? So, graphics are custom. Texture quality high, texture filtering high, lighting effect low. Those are things that can distract you from what's on the other side or what's going on. The glints, the reflections, the explosions. Uh, those are things, effects quality, that I want to keep to a minimum and not have over the top. Because the last thing I wanted to do is come around the corner, shit hit the fan, stuff be exploding, and have a frame drop from 160 to like 50. That'd be horrible. That'd be real bad, and that would not be a smooth experience. Post-process quality, medium, mesh quality, high, terrain quality, high, terrain decoration, medium, anti-aliasing deferred, off, anti-aliasing post-low, ambient occlusion, off. Ambient occlusion is a big-time hog. It can really kill your frame rates. But the question is, are you on a 60 hertz monitor? If you are, you can set these settings up a lot higher than I have. And this is my baseline. This is my personal preference at the moment. I'm still testing. So hopefully you guys take a look at a couple of the links down below, the Windows 7 versus Windows 8. Go take a look at your BIOS. Go take a look at your chipset. Go take a look at your video card drivers and play around with your settings. There's a lot of things that you can change in there that can drastically increase your frame rates. So between the core unparking, if you have a multi-core system and some of these settings and a couple of the drivers, you should have a pretty good jump. As always, YouTubers, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Let me know if you guys found updated BIOS. And of course, what kind of results are you guys having? And don't forget to tell me a little bit about your system. Are you on an AMD graphics card, an NVIDIA graphics card? What type and what CPU? We'll see you guys soon.